just to show you a different use case if you want to use safeguard in this case safeguard sps initiated sessions this is a little bit different as you may know because in this case you just interact mainly with the proxy itself and then the proxy reaches out to the password vault to the spp to check out the password for the privileged account you're using inside the session so it's a little bit different but it can be used independently from each other in this case you need the microsoft Ser terminal services client and i have it here on my screen i want to connect to a system that is called member in my domain and the magic goes in the advanced button in settings it is says that you use a remote desktop gateway and in this case, Safeguard for Privileged Session is configured to act as a remote desktop service gateway. That's all you need to know. In this case, just click on Cancel here and then go back to the General tab. And you know the username is a little bit weird in this case. It, it is example.demo, that's my domain, dash auto slash the privileged account. And this is configured for auto login. So just click on Connect. And now you have to specify the user you want to connect to the remote service, uh, remote desktop service gateway, in fact, to the SPP, uh, SPS. So this is just for verification of your user account. So in this case, you just say example, that's my domain, and my, my user I want to connect to the, and authenticate to the gateway is uh, hmeyer and my password is this one and click on connect and now it comes back with enter your credentials and it now is requesting something for your privileged account but you don't know the account uh, credentials because they, they are stored in the world and you don't have access to them so to bypass this screen just enter the name of the account as it is shown here it is test one so simply use test one in lower cases as it's shown here and simply click on OK. And now this mechanism reaches out, checks out the password for this privileged account, injects it to the session, locks you in, a voila, here you are. Works like magic, very straightforward, very easy. Let's talk about approvals in the safeguard workflow and how easy it is to change, remove, add, or modify them. Okay, so let's remember our password request we have seen already. Let's, we're gonna uh, log in as the requester for, and use the password, configure to log in, and our standard request would be to call for an approval. So if you go to here, we just have our, oh, not the database, the Linux server, the next, Click to select accounts, click to the Linux admin, and click to OK. Pretty much the same we have done already. And click on Next, select a reason, and click to Submit. And now you see that there's no approval anymore. So what have I done? If I click back to the, uh, to the Safeguard Administrative Client, and you know you must use the Safeguard Administrative Client to do any configuration changes inside Safeguard, so we are now locked in with the FAT client as the Safeguard Administrator. And the only thing I have to change or I changed is about the entitlements. And in the entitlements for my passwords, I have access request policies. And one of the access request policies is the Linux admin password. And if I double click on that, I just went to the approver and switched it to auto approved. So that's no, no approval anymore. If you want to switch it back, just go to approvals required. Maybe you have to browse for the approvers. We have a group configured named Safeguard Approvers. This is the one that was the situation before. So if we want to remove that, just simply click on auto approved, apply, and it works instantly. So in this case, this is the situation we have now here with no approval anymore.